All right, guys, today I'm smoking a brisket on the Pit Boss Barrel from start to finish. Could be a long one, but should be a good one. Let's get to cooking. Right, guys, welcome back to another one. Today, we're, uh, well, I guess, tonight, we're gonna be putting on a brisket. Yes, we're doing a brisket. Now, there's nothing exactly special about watching someone cook a brisket on social media platforms anymore because everyone's done them. I've even done probably two or three videos on them. But what I haven't done is sort of try to guide whoever's watching how I treat the brisket, my method of cooking. You know, I'll, I'll try and talk you through the step-by-step -step process uh, and to why I do it. So, let's get into it. All right, now as far as trimming this brisket up is concerned, as you can see, places like here, um, a couple of places up here, this hard fat, uh, where it's in excess proportions, you know, this stuff here, yeah, is fine, um, but as, as, I'll, as I'll take a bit off here and I'll show you, it's actually the fridge is up a little bit high. So that's what we're looking to take off, right? That, that uh, at the temperature that we're going to be cooking this brisket off, that isn't going to render down fully. Um, as we said, we're going to leave a thin layer of fat but in excess proportions like that, we're gonna take it off. So, we're gonna put that into our tray because that will make some great tallow. If, if you're not comfortable or confident taking off, you know, your fat here on your brisket, when you go to the butcher, he can do it for you. You can just feel around, like, bits of fat there that aren't, so you get the difference between hard fat like that compared to, you know, soft fat, like, like here, you know, that's, that's going to render down fairly easy over the, uh, over the course of the cook. So if we flip it over, you can see there's not much, you know, if you want to spend your time taking off a bit of that silver skin on the back, you can. I don't really worry about it too much. Uh, I definitely won't be making a debut in the uh, surgery game at all. Um, but bits like this, again, I'll just go back over. Like hard bits of fat like that, you know, we've still got a nice layer of the, the thin fat here to help protect, you know, that meat from drying out. But that, they're the bits that you want to get off. And you want to save them too, because as, as again, as I said again, these are going to make, like these off cuts, are going to make some great tallow. And um, if you've never had beef tallow before, then, you know, it's great to use as a supplement for, you know, olive oil, cooking your bacon in beef tallow. Oh, absolutely sensational. All right, let's, uh, we're going to chuck on a binder. You can, you, when you cook on brisket, they come out of the pack like this, already pretty, uh, Let's say shiny. Uh, so you don't really need a binder, but we're gonna uh, we'll just put a coating of olive oil on there for good measure. All right, now, use your favorite seasoning. Today, we're gonna be going um, the Backyard Barbecue from Aussie Q Barbecue. This is an espresso-based rub. Um, if you've never used espresso on your beef proteins before, then you're missing out because it goes extremely well. So, we're just going to go ahead, and we might, we could even put some of our all-purpose on. So we might go a light coating of the backyard rub, or should I say my dark temptations rub, which is an espresso-based rub as well. I guess non generous. And with the espresso in this rub as well, it's going to assist us with that uh, bark formation, as you'll see later on in the cook. And this is going, this, this will be in the, this is gonna go back in the fridge, so I'm not gonna be putting this on until around midnight tonight. So this will have a chance to sweat as well and absorb some of that rub. So we will, we will reassess Before we put it back on tonight we may even come over the top with another coating right looks pretty good I'm gonna flip her over and uh, we'll do the fat side we're about too much 
We're going to worry about a binder on our fat side. That cutting board's already pretty wet. When you are seasoning up your meat, you want to pat it down instead of actually rubbing it like that because you're just going to get inconsistent places of, depending on what you're cooking on your cut of meat, where it's not exactly seasoned in some places. All right, there we go. Righto, so we're going to go and chuck this into our fridge and um, we'll come back here. I'll make sure I've got a light set up so we can see or somewhat see and uh, we'll get our smoker lit up and we'll put this bad boy on. Righto, so we're here, it's finally midnight, we've got our heat beads in our chimney roaring away as you can see. Without further ado, we're going to get our brisket on and it's time to put her to bed. I'm going to bang her on there in the middle, like so. Perfect. And then close the lid. Alright, we've been on for six and a half hours exactly. That bark is forming perfectly. So we're going to wrap her up, get her back on the smoker, get some temperatures cranked up to 250 Fahrenheit. Well, that's 121 degrees Celsius. And then we're just going to go until this bad boy probes tender. Righto, it's now 12 o'clock, uh, middle of the day. It is now 12 hours exactly since we've had our brisket on. I've just probed it with a uh, little wooden skewer and there is no resistance at all. This thing is tender as, as can be. So what we're going to do is we're just going to wrap this up in our blanket here. And this is just gonna go into a dry esky, just like so. We're gonna put this into a dry esky for a minimum of at least an hour. We'll probably do two hours, that's what I normally do with briskets. And we're gonna then unwrap it, slice into it, and see how we did.